So, let's start with the um, second phase of the implementation of the service. And um, so now we'll see that a lot of magic is here in the code. So why is this magic? Because now I'm going to use the part where we access the database. And so what do I have? So we have my service, the administrative service, but I'm saying that is, I have a notation saying that is a service, okay? You need to have this to work, okay? And you have injection of two repositories. What is the, so the course repository and course execution repositories. So they are injected here automatically by Spring Boot. And actually, you're gonna use them to save the objects that are going to create into the database and to query the database as well. So the first thing, oh, and another thing that you have is the execution of this service should be transactional. And so you need to state here in this annotation that is transaction and define the isolation level. In this case, the isolation level is repeatable read. So what we have it is, uh, the first thing that, that we do is basically I go to the course repository, invoke a method that given the name returns the course, okay? It actually returns an optional and if it is empty, the optional will return null. So, and the course is there. We can check this method. So, this method is managed by Ibernate and what we have done is we just wrote a query and in this query, you will select from courses where the name is this name here that is in the signature of the method and returns an optional course, okay? Uh, as, you, as you know, so these repositories, these JPA repositories provide uh, several services, and, uh, but you may add more services here, okay? So, if it is null, what we basically do, you, we create the course, okay? And, of course, we need to save it in the database. Now, next, what we do? We create the execution course using the course that was created or the course that was already defined in the database. And then we save it, and then we just generate the course DTO with the object that was created, okay? And return it to the, uh, the, the, the code that invokes the service. As you can see, this is pretty simple, okay? We see that I have no checks about the inputs here because as you saw in the previous video, uh, everything is checked in the dom inside the domain, okay? Even the semantics, of course, and the semantics of the creation is, is inside the domain. Having done this, it's time to look at the tests. And I have, I've done a couple of things in the test such that I can test these without accessing the real database and use an in-memory database. So we need to annotate your test case with data data.pa test. You need to auto-wire, so to inject here a couple of things, the services you are going to use, and the repositories you are going to use, okay? And of course, now, let's look at the first, oh, there's another thing that you need to do before we just look at the code, is at the end I have the definition, the configuration to get the services. So we need to do this, and these are mocks that actually allows me to work on uh, the administration service and the course service, okay? So, but let, let's look at the code. So, what I had, we changed here. Basically, the only thing I changed is that in this case that the course exists, I need to create a course. But now, the course needs to be in the database. So, I had to add here that I just save the course in the database here, okay? So, that's one thing that I've done and I think that in this test, that's what all, all I've done. In the next text, actually, I do, 
I've done nothing because look, I don't create anything, so basically I don't need to save them to the database. I just check and they are really in the database because then I access them from the services, okay? And the other tests, then you need to save when you create, you need to save both the course and the course execution to the database. And I think it's, it's all. With these ones, you don't need to do anything because they're just verifying the input and we don't need to have something, nothing in the database before the, the, the test is executed. Okay? It's good. So let's run the tests to see if everything is working. Probably it's going to take a while because this is particular when you are recording. So the recording tool takes a lot of resources, so it gets slower, but okay, it's okay. So the tests are running, so running nine tests, and let's see what happens here. If they are gonna pass or fail. Okay. Oh, it shows you something. I fixed something that uh, from the previous video, something like uh, there was an equal here. So I didn't record that part and actually is equal equal I, in a couple of places, okay? But the first time I ran the test, I just uh, got these errors and I just fixed that, okay? So it's going to take a while. Let's, let's just wait a little bit. So the test finish and three tests passed and six pa tests passed and three failed. Well, let's look. What happened to the ones that failed? Okay. Spot usually really helpful. So the first one is this one. So I can, by clicking there, see which line. So the line is when I create a course, it fails. And I can see where actually is the error. And that's the error is in this line. Yes, it makes sense. It's throwing an exception. I just have an error there, it's name equal to. So I fix it, and which is good. I return there. Let's see if the other ones are the same. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same error, and it's the same error. So the three errors are because of this, for the same reason. So what I'm gonna do now, I just run the tests again. Okay, and let's wait a little bit. Okay, now I have three tests passed and two fail. Six, seven passed and two fail. So let's see what's happening here. Let's see. So, okay. So what I have here is that in this test, so in this instruction, and which is the test, the course exists and course is and create is a course execution. In this test, actually what is created is a technical course execution and not an ex external. And now I can realize what's happening here. I just click there. And what happens is that I forgot something. So I'm so, uh, as, as you remember, when I create the course and the course execution, by default, they are technical courses. So, what I need to do is to go here, course execution, dot set type, and I say course dot type dot external, okay? And I need to do the same to the course. Course dot set type. And I'm gonna copy this there. Okay. Good. So hopefully, hopefully, I will everything will be okay now. Let's see. My tests are okay now. Let's run them. It's 
So it takes a while, let's wait. So now I only a single file. Let's see what is the filer. So in car service I get get courses. So and there's a null there. So get courses return null. Why get courses return null? Let's look inside courses. Okay, and inside there. Because Spock shows me everything. Well, the course repository and the so the repositories inside the course are null. Okay. Uh, so it means that basically here when I create this is not receiving these course repositories. Okay. So I'm gonna change this a little bit. What I'm gonna do is basically instead of using this service, use the repository to, to check directly in the database. Okay, so what I've done, basically I removed the course service from here. Actually, I realized what was the reason of the bug was that in this code, I was a, the creation of an instance of course uh, uh, service instead of using the one that was injected. That's why it was the, the repositories inside were null. No. But um, anyway, I prefer to access directly the information from the repository. So what I changed here is basically that now I, after, in the results, I go to the course repository, I find and try to see a single course is there. And then I, I through the repository, I get it by and I check the value. I get it using the course name and I check it there. And actually I do the same for to find the created uh, course execution. Okay, I just see that there's one there in the database and then I just get get it and then I check the values here. Okay, now let's run all the tests to see every, if everything is okay. So if the tests pass means that um, the implementation is according to what we specified in the, in the set of tests. Okay, now we need to wait a little bit. Okay, nice. All the tests passed. I'm gonna do a next, just another thing, which is, look, I've changed the domain. So I had other tests here. And what I'm gonna do is to run all the tests to see if the chains I've done do not uh, introduce a bug and some of the tests we have, not the, one, the new ones, but the old, the, the old ones, um, fail, okay? And this is called usually regressive testing. So now we need to wait a little bit because it's gonna run all the tests in the backend. I think there are 90 something tests we have so far. Okay, it finished, it took a while, five minutes running. But okay, I think my machine is a bit overloaded with the, the recording software. But um, so we can see that we have 91 tests, zero errors, zero, zero errors. It means that by introducing, by implementing this functionality in the main, we didn't uh, uh, introduce any bugs on the uh, other functionality, as far as we know from the set of tests we have, of course. Okay, that's why it's nice to have a good cover of tests. Okay, this is the second part of the implementation of the service. There will be a third part, which I think will be a bit shorter. So, see you in a while.